Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at random number generation. So I've got a sort of straightforward enough question to start off with here, okay, and I'll actually just address that fully before I continue on to the next question. So let x be a discrete random variable with the following probability distribution. There's three, four possible values of x, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then there are correspondingly the probabilities of each outcome, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. This is a very straightforward discrete random variable, so... You know, there's no complicated looking probability mass function calculations or anything like that. Although we should expect them in the near future with this course material. So essentially what we have to do here is simulate three observations of X using the following three random numbers drawn from the uniform distribution on 0 and 1. Now that's important there. That's sort of the fundamental of this. This is a very uh, simple operation to do for a computer, okay? So essentially, all of the mathematical simulation uh, simulations on uh, number generation and random number generation, the fundamental building block is essentially the uniform distribution between 0 and 1. So essentially, the, the idea is really that this is a very straightforward operation for a, mechanic, for an, um, a computer to do mechanically to generate these numbers. But what we would do is perform mathematical transformations to uh, help us cr uh, create more elaborate random number generation, okay? So uh, essentially it's, uh, I'll actually just sort of continue on here. So it's 0 0.4936, 0 0.7269, and 0 0.1642. Now, the key part is here, okay? Essentially the ordering doesn't really matter so much. We'll just sort of keep consistent with the order that we have there. It, you can actually just do it in reverse or you know any way you like. But it'll come out it should come out the same. Essentially what we do here is we set up a little system here. Okay? So our method is as follows. So essentially what happens is we generate u. So generate u okay. And we don't know what it is, but it's some number between zero and one. Okay, so it's like 0 0.2512 okay so what happens here is that if whatever number we generate uh, just actually just be paid close attention to the um, uh, less uh, the, the relational operators less than and less than less than or equal to okay now but essentially if the generated number let's just say it's 0 0.2512 uh, according to this rule, so the, there's a 40% chance of landing in this bracket, okay, and a 30% chance of landing in this bracket. So z this is 30% or 0 0.3, the probability here. This is a probability of 0 0.4, 0 0.7 to 0 0.9, that's a 20% probability, and then a 10% probability of being greater than 0 0.9 okay so it's sort of just build yeah, using the cumulative sums there to just generate these thresholds okay so a 40 percent chat 40 percent probability of it being in this range of values a 30 percent probability of being in this range of values likewise 20 and 10 0 0.1 0 0.2 each of these groups are mutually exclusive okay and that's the point i was sort of going to get at when i was talking about the relational operators so a random number, if it's generated, it goes into one of these four categories. And if it goes into these one of one of these four categories, essentially what we do is assign an outcome there. Okay. So, in the first instance, our first number is zero point four nine. Well, it doesn't go into the first category. I'll just do zero point four nine. Just leave it like that. It goes into the second category, so that means the outcome is one. It's between zero point four and zero point. 7. The second number is 0 0.726. Okay. Uh, that ends up in the third category here. Okay. So the second number we would generate would be 2. And finally, what we would do then is 0 0.15. 1652. 1652. And that ends up here in the first category as well. Whoops, going too far there. So that ends up in the first category there. There, there, in that one there. Okay. Now that's just a demonstration of how it works. But what could happen there is you could set up something slightly different. You get three different numbers here. 
and that's fine sorry that the zero is the last one and that's fine but overall if you run this experiment enough times you'll end up with the, the correct amount of zeros ones twos and threes okay so you'll end up with 40 percent zeros uh 30% ones, 20% twos, and 10% threes in the long term. Okay, so you just have to. I, I didn't really explain it there because it's sort of like more of an essay to, to, if you get me, to write it out what I've just done there. So it's the comprehension is very important than just verbalizing it. Okay, so the second question is let x be a random variable cumulative distribution function so on f of x equals that should be an equals there uh, 1 over 1 minus e to the minus 1 times 1 minus e to the minus x squared and again this is x is between 0 and 1 okay and just to fully specify the cumulative distribution there we add in that there as well okay it's not it is important but it's not the most important thing to be looking at now Derive an expression for a simulated value of x using a random number u, okay, from a uniform distribution on 0 and 1, and then simulate an observation of x using the random number u equals 0 0.41, uh, not, uh, for, sorry, 0 0.8149. So let's just go down here. Essentially what we do is this straightforward enough question really so we set u as the value of f of x okay just notice the typo there a little bracket now cumulative distribution function cdf okay now let's just go back here to the previous one i'll just sort of scrub all this sort of stuff out here this actually could be described as the cumulative distribution the upper limits here this is the cumulative distribution of the corresponding numbers here so essentially the cumulative distribution does act as a threshold of um, of the uh, of which number uh, you will generate and so also the less the less than or equal to is important because I mean essentially if we do generate 0 0.4 we get 0 if we do generate 0 0.7 we get 1 and so on okay so essentially the cumulative distribution function in particular here is pretty important okay so it's essentially there is a correspondence between that and the outcome okay a close a very close correspondence okay so that's why we can set u as the value of the cdf the cumulative distribution function okay and sort of try and work back to figure out what is the x value accordingly okay the so essentially what we do here it also i just actually note that it is we're, we're dealing with a continuous distribution here so it's not perfectly uh that's not a perfect description but just for the sake of brevity it'll help us to get going so really what we have here is a mathematical operation essentially what we have to do is we set u as the um cdf and we rearrange it algebraically okay we try and isolate x, so we end up with e to the minus x squared equals 1 minus 1 minus e to the minus 1 u. Okay, so essentially, just working that out, what we get is this expression here, minus log of 1 minus e to the minus 1 times u, and get the square root of the, all of that. Okay, quite a complicated expression, but what you can do is simplify it a little bit here. And essentially, it's the square root of minus of the log of 0.3678u, okay? Or that expression to the power of a half. So if you just put in that number there, the, the number you were given, okay? And do a little bit of calculator work, what you should end up with there is a, a, a generated value, a simulated value of 0 0.851. Okay, we'll leave it there.